Joining us now is Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Oji. Good morning, Dr. Abati. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How, How was your weekend? weekend? Oh, well, uh, yours. I'm interested in yours. Uh, <laughs> 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 I did smile on How are you? <laughs> Great to see I you. I haven't again. seen you here in a while. <laughs> good to be back here. Good to see you. Well, good morning to you viewers. We begin what's trending today in Kano State, Nigeria, where Governor Abdullahi Ganduji has stirred a lot of reactions over relaxing the lockdown order imposed by President Muhammad Buhari in the state. The governor over the weekend announced that his decision to ease the lockdown order was taken with the consent of the president to allow for free movement at certain hours. The governor said the hours would be between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays. Nigerians on Twitter have shared their views, many of them outraged by his decision. One user, Solomon, wrote, The Kano governor has acted in ways that exposes other states to the spread of COVID-19. First, he repatriates infected Amajiris to other states. Two, he defied the presidential lock directive on lockdown of Kano. Three, he's been unable to stem movements from Kano to other states like Oyo. Leaving Ganduje to manage the COVID-19 in Kano State will be to expose not just the North to a worsening of the pandemic, but he risks exposing the entire nation. He has proven incapable of managing the inferno. A presidential task force is not enough. Step Ganduje aside, pronto. Another user, Dr. Femi, wrote 640 people die in one week in Kano. Almost 30 elites dead. Kano records 300 cases in two weeks. Emir of Rano dies today after suspected COVID-19 contact. Today, Ganduje relaxes Kano lockdown for more people to die. That man is the worst thing that happened to Kano in 500 years. Finally, a user posted a video of some people in Kano at the funeral of the Emir of Rano with a caption, Kano people struggling to touch the dead body of Emir Tafida. Social distancing tripped out in thousands for the burial of the late Emir of Rano, Alhaji Tafida Abubakar, who died mysteriously on Saturday. Well, let's take a look at that video. <laughs> It is interesting to note that the uh, governor of Kano is a PhD holder, but I think that it's more important for him to educate the people about the importance of physical distancing first before thinking about free movement. I mean, I don't understand why he's not he's unaware about the importance of, you know, social distancing, physical distancing, really, as well as, you know, people staying at home. It's important at this time, especially knowing that Kano is now is the second epic center of the virus in the country. Well, well, I, I don't know whether, <clears throat> you know, that video that was shown yes. about uh, the Emir of uh, Rano, yeah, that's whether, a tweet, yeah. whether the video is correct, it's correct yeah. uh, because it's there were also some other reports right. that said that, you know, that video uh, has Not nothing touched. to do with the Emir of right. Rano uh, who died. However, you know, your point about the need for social distancing is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we keep saying that a lot more should be done in terms of public enlightenment. Right. And I guess that's why Dr. Mwokolo yeah. was also uh, calling out the National Orientation Agency. Right. Uh, it's, you know, public enlightenment is something that should be done at all levels. Now, you talked about uh, Dr. Ganduja's PhD. I think PhD has nothing to do with this. Well, I mean... You don't need to have a PhD, you know, to be able to provide a leadership. Some of the uh, uh, great leaders in the world never got a PhD. Okay. A, a PhD is a research degree. It's not uh, research. It, it's not, it, it's I a, like the fact that you said research. It's a research degree, degree exactly. But, but mean... it doesn't automatically confer common sense. <laughs> now, secondly, you know, uh, I think the point also needs to be made in fairness to the governor mm, that actually he talked about social distance yes. when he said he was going to reopen two markets, Yan Kaba and uh, yes. uh, Yan Lemo uh, markets. He said, look, people must observe social distancing. So it's not as if he doesn't understand what social distancing or physical distancing is all yes. about. Mm -hmm. But government needs to continue to provide the leadership to enlighten the people. And it, and it totally goes beyond saying an awareness to implementation. As we have seen in discipline, 
uh, seems to be one of our greatest characteristics as a people. Uh, so we do not understand why we need to play our role. And so we, are, we, we may have left the bulk of the work to the government to do. While the government has a role to play, the people also have a role to play. Yeah, right, so right. the people of Kano need to wake up from the slumber that they are in. Uh, COVID is real. Uh, but I also do not blame the people entirely, uh, and I'll blame the government as well. Because, like I said initially, the government seems to be in denial in itself. If you just look at the rhetoric of the deaths that were recorded, they were mysterious, they were diabetes, uh, they were hypertension deaths, you know, and they had nothing to do with COVID. So all of this lingered. And then we are having the people now living in denial. And then you have the issue of trust. There has yes. been the issue of trust. And like I said earlier as well, there's also the historical background in the North where people are skeptical about glo global public health measures. Right. If you look at polio, look at Lassa fever, it's been there. They do not trust even vaccination to a certain extent. So well, the go every governor has the work cut out for them. But I think yeah. the governors in the North have double work to do. Like I said in my intro, he said the reason is because he wants to allow for free movement. Mm. Now that's the point. I don't know why you would need free movement at this critical time well, of the pandemic. When Efeni was Let's... there, we said part of the problem could be communication. Yes. You know, because uh, they've been changing the, the phrasing, amending the phrasing. Mm. And, you know, government at this time just must pay very close attention to what they communicate. And again, uh, you know, political leaders mm -hmm. should only comment on what they know. Exactly. Because some of them have been talking about the science of it. Right. They should leave the science of it to the, to, to the experts. All right. Well, let's head over to China now, where a video released by the country's news agency, Xinhua, depicting the power struggle between the U.S. and China has gone viral. In the animated video called Once Upon a Virus, Lego-like figures represent, representing both the U.S. and China trade arguments over America's slow response to the coronavirus pandemic. Let's take a look. December. Strange pneumonia cases reported. Roger that. January. We discovered a new virus. So what? It's dangerous. It's only a flu. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Stay at home. It's violating human rights. Building temporary hospitals. It's a concentration camp. Built in 10 days. Show off. Time to lockdown. How barbaric. February. It's overwhelming our medical system. Look how backward China is. The virus is killing doctors. Typical third world. It's airborne. It'll magically go away in April. Everyone stay at home. Violation of human rights. March. Our numbers are now dropping. Impossible. Look at Italy. We wore masks. You lied to us. We made our data public. You kept everything secret. Your people are now dying. You didn't warn us. We said it was dangerous. You lied. April. We said it was airborne. You gave false data. Why didn't you warn us? We said it was dangerous. The virus is not dangerous, but millions of Chinese are dead. Even though the virus is not dangerous, we are correct. Even though we contradict ourselves. Gosh, just listen to yourself. That's right. You lied. We did nothing for three months. And because the WHO agrees with China, we're cutting funding for the WHO. Are you listening to yourself? has continued to insist that, you know, China has continued to conceal the data for the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And really, uh, truly, this um, really depicts the whole uh, fact of, uh, you know, this U.S. and China trade uh, war that they've been going through for a while. Basically, you know, I think even on Thursday, Donald Trump said in a statement that, you know, China, um, that the virus was actually or that originated from uh, a Chinese lab. I mean, it's really, really ridiculous at this well, point. Well, I mean, the, the animation looks interesting, but yeah. it's not uh, something to laugh about. Right. Um, there has been, uh, you know, a conspiracy theory that as articulated by President Trump, which you pointed out, mm -hmm. but the position of President Trump is not supported uh, by the uh, National Agency for Intelligence mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. Intelligence and security experts in the same United States have said that, look, uh, this is not a biological weapon escaping from any laboratory, that the origin of COVID-19 is uh, natural. So the, uh, I think President Trump himself should be listening more to his intelligence uh, and security experts. Absolutely. That's one. Two, President Trump is threatening that he will impose tariffs more uh, tariffs on uh, Chinese imports. And that, you know, will be a return to the trade war that we had between 2018 and 2019 until a preliminary trade deal was signed in January this year. 
Now, if that were to happen, it would have very serious implications for growth, not just in both countries, but also in the entire world. Because right. as they say, when two elephants fight, you know, it's the grass that uh, suffers. And with COVID-19, if we have a return to uh, that trade war, uh, then, of course, there will be, uh, there will be uh, you know, more shocks. Mm -hmm. Already after President Trump spoke, you know, the, the market reacted immediately. Stocks dropped in Japan. The FTSE 100 dropped. The uh, Dow Jones also uh, dropped by about 2.2%. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and the stock market in the UK dropped by about 2.5%. That's yeah. just on the basis of a statement made by President Trump. And I think President Trump is playing uh, election year politics mm -hmm. because his ratings have been dropping. Uh, you know, the contraction, economic contraction in the U.S. is about 46% yes. in the last three months. So the two countries will need to be very careful uh, how they politicize COVID-19. Yes, I totally you... agree with you. I mean, this is what happens when you spend most of your time on Twitter. You begin to believe internet rumors <laughs> over your intelligence right. officers. Exactly. He has also said that this is a plan to make him not win his re-election in November. <laughs> I, I mean, he needs I to mean, listen to also, in, you know, accusing China of releasing false data. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't understand how they, he, he would be um, accusing them of releasing false data because they have also been reiterating over the past few months about how many people have been going through the whole process of the pandemic. Well, thank you China. very much, Oji. We'll you. see you again tomorrow you morning.